Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk that can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. Welcome to the new time and new day, you know, for the uh, Arrow 101 call or the, the developer's insights. If this is your first time on the call, my name is Nathan Williams. I am the uh, developer of the Arrow software. I welcome to the call, all right? Uh, this call, I will go over how to set up Arrow, how to set up your dashboard, um, as well as how to use it with options as well. So we'll start adding options in here as well. Uh, and going over some of the platforms. Well, most of the platforms are all the same. Uh, so we'll be going over that as well. All right. Uh, also, how to use at the end of the day, we'll also talk about strategy number one. That's in the back office because strategy number one is transcendent. It doesn't matter what you're using. The only variation is how you use it. But strategy number one is utilized in every platform available. So if you're trading options, if you're trading uh, uh, Forex, if you're trading crypto, if you're trading indices, precious metals, it didn't matter. Strategy number one, bouncer or go is the way. All right. So let's get started. All right. We're going to jump. We're going to go through this real quickly here. All right. So first things first is getting set up. All right. So if you're new and you set up your software, you should be able to come to the dashboard here. So I'm in the back office in Avoya Prime. All right. So when you log in, all right, you can come here to AP Marketplace and come down here to Switch Tools. All right, Switch Tools. As long as you have a uh, arrow, you'll see it right here. It's tool one or whatever tool you have, it'll say active and have arrow for you. All right. All right. If you don't have this here, uh, you can simply go on and select Arrow as your software, all right? If you already have another software, you may need to upgrade to a different pass. Or uh, if you've never selected the software, then you select the, uh, instead of launch VPS, I believe it says select software, something like that. You select that and then go through the list and select your VPS. I'm sorry, select your software, which would be Arrow, all right? Once you selected it, select launch VPS. If you select your software for the first time, it's going to take about 30 minutes to an hour before your VPS is created. Your VPS is a virtual private server. All right. So what that means is you have a virtual computer in the cloud. Now, why is this important? It's important because if you downloaded the software onto your computer and your computer goes to sleep, you have a power outage, whatever the case may be, you won't get any of the signals. All right. But with the computer in the cloud, the cloud is always on or the computer is always on in the cloud. Therefore, you'll get all your notifications, all your signals from the software. All right. Also, the software is protected. So as a developer, I don't want my software to be getting to the hands of somebody else that could actually uh, go and use it for, you know, for uh, uh, Ill, 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 Ill intentions. Let's put it that way. They don't want them to steal the software, uh, things of that nature. All right. Once you're here on the Avoya Prom Connect page, you want to come down here to VPS accounts, click on this drop down. Come down here to access pass running. Your password will pop up. Ensure and make sure that you do not, all right, you do not share your password. I'm only sharing mine because mine goes to a dummy account. All right, it doesn't matter for me. You know, I have multiple accounts to make sure that I can use one to show you guys how to set it up so that it's, you, know, you guys can you know, visually see how to set things up, all right? But do not show it. All right, once you've gone through that, there's going to be four buttons down here. Connect to your VPS, reboot your VPS, view your password again, remote desktop connection. All right. So connecting to your VPS means connecting through this website. Remote desktop connection means connect to your VPS through a remote desktop connection, which is uh, your Microsoft remote desktop. So if you have a Windows computer or if you have a Mac, download or 
you know, the, the Microsoft Remote Desktop, if you have a Mac, and then just search in your, uh, uh, your actual uh, apps for Microsoft Remote Desktop if you have a Windows-based computer. That is the best way to actually access your VPS. The connection is stronger. Your pixels are better, so your picture is more clear, all right? And you've got a better signal. So going through the Microsoft Remote Desktop is the best way to set up and access the VPS. I'll show you how to go through your computer uh, just in case you need to use that for whatever reason, but please download a Microsoft Remote Desktop. If you have any issues around the lines of speed, clearer picture, things of that nature, I told you, Microsoft Remote Desktop. So before you connect your VPS, you wanna make sure that you have your password saved. So go ahead and select the password, come here, highlight it, copy that there. All right, come back in here and then go to connect the VPS. All right, remember, we'll come back to this in a minute, reboot your VPS. So we go to connect your VPS. All right, when this pops up here, do not press control alt delete from your computer it does not work you need to hit this button here that says send control alt delete when you hit that it does it for you all right then you need to select trader and then copy and paste your password do not copy and paste it here come up here where you see right here where it says type of paste here you want to paste your password there. You see it automatically puts it there. Hit the little arrow. And by the bing, by the boom, you are in. All right, you are in. All right. All right. Let me go ahead and kick this one out. So as you can see here. Whoever has been, go ahead and log in real quick. <laughs> all right, that's how you log in. So all I'm gonna do on this, as you can see here, it's not even a full screen. It's not a full screen. Picture's not as clear as you'll see it. Uh, so this is the way that you log in if you wanna go through the desktop, all right? What it'll look like, you know, for you here without the software up or the this MT4, this is what it looked like here, all right? You'll see here, arrow, you have a little icon here, number one or number two, however many softwares you have. If I'm gonna this arrow, double click on that. And that is what brings up that is what brings up the MT4 with the software already downloaded to it, all right? So now that we know that, as you can see here on the desktop, you can see it says reboot. When you, whenever you reboot your, your VPS, you wanna make sure you, re, you reboot here, and you also wanna make sure you reboot here. So reboot in both places to get the full reboot. All right, after you've rebooted, all right, uh, I, you, know, you also wanna come here and do the Windows update. All right, Windows update, all right? And you want to do the Windows update because it's a Windows-based computer. Even though it's in the cloud, you want to make sure that you get everything up to date and stay up to date. I recommend doing this Friday when the market closes, between Friday when the market closes, and Sunday when the market reopens. So somewhere between that time frame, I is when I recommend doing it. You can do it whenever, but that's just so that you don't miss trades or you're not doing it through it during the time where it's going to affect your opportunity to trade. Because if you happen to have an issue where you reboot it and it doesn't come back up, you can submit a ticket and get that fixed before um before it's time to trade again so that's why i recommend trading you know doing that when the market is closed all right so we're going to get out of this here all right now to uh, to actually log into your actual microsoft remote desktop you want to come here to remote desktop connection and you have all your information here username ip password username trader ip random numbers password random letters and numbers all right Again, do not share this with anybody. I'm sharing it with you guys because it's a dummy account. It only goes to a demo account. So it doesn't matter to me. But if someone were, you know, got your login information, they can go to your account and do damage on your live account. So make sure you don't share this information. But this is the credentials you need to log in. 
All right, so let me pull up Microsoft Remote Desktop uh, real quick here. All right, pull up Microsoft Remote Desktop so you can see, you guys can see what it looks like. Let me share my screen. Boom, boom, boom. Here's what Microsoft Remote Desktop looks like. All right, as you can see, I'm logged into four different ones. One, two, three, four different VPSs. All right. To add one, you simply hit the plus sign. Now, if you got this is the Mac version. You got the Windows version. It looks somewhat different, but about the same. So you just hit the plus sign to add new. Let me reshare what the new screen looks like. All right, here it is. Connection name, you can just type in AP, whatever you want to call it. You see, I got multiple names for mine. So AP. Uh, if you want to type in, yeah, I just type, just type in AP. PC name, you see it says host name or IP address. Here's where you put, you paste the IP address. Username is always trader. All right, always trader. And password, paste your password. So just pull the information from the website, paste your IP address, type in trader or paste the trader, and then also paste your password. Once you're done, if you have Mac, you hit the red button. And when you hit the red button, it will automatically show up, whatever you named it will show up here on this platform here uh if you uh hit the if you're on the windows version i believe you just hit save and it'll do the same thing and then all you have to do is just double click what you saved it as and log in all right so we'll hit up uh we'll hit up we'll go ahead and log in so i can show you guys what it looks like log in real quick and then share my screen All right, here we are. Same alert screen. Got the reboot button, got the Windows update, and it says number one arrow. We're good. Double click on that one, and it automatically brings up this platform right here. Let me take off the software for you guys so you guys don't see it here. It'll bring up this. All right, this is the MetaTrader 4 software. All right, MetaTrader 4 is how we use arrow. That's the platform we trade arrow on. All right, so Metaphor, MetaTrader 4 allows us to connect to our broker so that we can execute trades, all right? The software, Arrow, allows us to uh, make the decisions on the trades that we make, all right? Uh, Arrow is just a visual-aided software that allows you to see how the market is moving and have potential setups and entries uh, and exits, you know, for specific trades, all right? There are 10 strategies in the back office that walk you through uh, the, you know, how to get in a trade, how to get out of a trade. We'll go over one of those today, that's strategy number one. But before that, um, I'm gonna check to see if we have any Q&A, any questions. And if not, I see we have no questions, nothing in the chat. All right, great, so we'll keep it moving. Um, if you guys got questions, put it in the Q&A. If you just wanna say something in general, just put it in the chat, no big deal, all right? So uh, I'm gonna walk you guys through two scenarios. Some people don't really wanna use a dashboard. The dashboard allows you to monitor multiple pairs. All right, on um, multiple time frames for bag entries for the arrows when the arrows pop up. All right, some people just want to look at one pair. Some people only like trading one pair, two pairs, so they don't want or need the dashboard. And that's fine. So I'll show you how to use the dashboard. I'll show you how to use arrow first, uh, and then how to use the dashboard if you want to set that up as well. So first thing you do is log into your account. So when you got an MT4 here, you want to come up here, file, open an account. Because this is going to be the first time logging into this broker, I mean, into this MT4 on this computer. You want to come down here to add new broker, hit the plus sign, type in your broker's name, hit scan. When you do so, you'll see stuff come up. Let's say you pick Trader's Way. See, Trader's Way has a demo server, a live server, a live two server. When you go to your broker, you have to do this first. Go to your broker. Again, I'm not going to recommend any broker. Um, the only thing I will tell you is I, I you know, uh, make sure that you're utilizing uh, a, an A book broker. You don't want to be manipulated by a B book broker. Uh, make sure that your A book broker has low spreads and make sure that your A book broker has, gives you access to multiple asset classes. So, cryptocurrency, stocks, uh, things of that nature, Forex, currency pairs, things of that nature. All right. Um, once you're done with that, go to that broker. You find the one you want to use, set an account up. When you set up an account, whether it's a demo account or a live account, all right. Demo allows you to trade fake money. Alive allows you to trade your money. 
Uh, I recommend everybody start that on a demo account first to get used to using the software, both MT4 and Arrow. And then once you get used to utilizing it, go ahead and switch over to live, you know, and, and start putting your real money, you know, at, at, at work. All right, now, when you first set up your account with your broker, they're gonna send you an email with your credentials. The email is gonna have what server, uh, the server name that your account is on. It's gonna also have your account number, which is your log. And it's gonna give you two passwords. So four pieces of information. Your two passwords, one is a trader password, one is an investor password. Your trader password never give out. That is yours and for you only, it allows you to make trades on that account. The investor password is a read only. So if you want somebody to follow along with you and just see how you, you can give them the uh, investor password plus your account number, they can log in with that and they'll never be able to make a trade. They'll just be able to look only. All right. So once you, let's say we select the Trader's Way Live 2 and we go, we select that, we go next, come here to existing trade account because again, you've already gone to the broker and set one up. Type in your login, which is your account number and your password, which is the password I give you. That's it. It is case sensitive, so make sure that you put it in exactly the way it comes. All right. Once you're done with that, hit finish. I'm not gonna hit finish because I'm already logged in. If you logged in correctly, two things will happen. Number one, you'll hear that it says you've got mail, just like the old AOL. All right, that's what MT4 would say. Number two, you'll see that down here in the right-hand corner, you'll get red and green bars, and it'll tell you how fast your speed is in kilobytes. If you've inputted in your account number or your password incorrectly in the bottom right hand corner, it'll say invalid account or not or disconnected, something around those lines. All right. So you got to make sure you log in correctly. All right. Once you've done so, all you want to do is come up here to under file. There's an icon, there's a white piece of paper with a green plus sign. That's create a new chart. This allows you to select a new chart. So let's say that the only pair that you like to trade is Bitcoin. So you make sure you get Bitcoin. All right. Open it up. All right. And then up here on the top right, you know, on the uh, uh, this menu dashboard, the last icon right here says templates. Select that. Come down here and select arrow. Bada bing, bada boom. There goes the software now on your platform for Bitcoin. All right. Now. Let's go back over to templates. You see mine says arrow and I have blackout. The rest of them are, they're all default. But arrow and blackout were added, you know, uh, by AP, you know, to ensure you have everything you need. If you do not see one or both of these, submit a ticket. Just let them know that you do not have arrow or blackout or both in, in your templates drop down menu. All right. And then they'll get that updated for you uh, ASAP. All right. All right. So now that you got this set up, you just change time frames here. And you're good to go. You are good to go. You see that you've got arrow already preloaded. All right. So all you have to do is no matter what chart you go to, you, you can just click on the menu. I mean, the templates folder drop down and hit arrow and it'll put it on for you. All right. We'll go over what arrow, we'll go through the basics of what arrow is here shortly. All right. Uh, next, let me show you guys how to set up the dashboard. Then I'll check to see about any questions and answers. And then we'll go through what the, you know, how to, uh, what the dashboard is. Actually, let's do this first. Let me go through the Q&A first. Uh, dashboard's a little lengthy. Is there a plan to be able to use MT5? At the moment, there is no plan for MT5. There is no plan. How can we set it up on the Kindle? So on the Kindle, if you have the capability of downloading uh, remote, the Microsoft Remote Desktop, it's the only way you can use it. I, Kindle, I believe, is Android-based, so you should be able to go to the uh, Play Store and download the Microsoft Remote Desktop. Download that, put your credentials in, and you'll be good to go. Uh, Nate, what happens in Arrow to trigger the Arrow? I believe I heard you say confirm trend change. Is that correct? So there are three types of arrows. They all look the same, but there are three reasons why, there are three strategies that pop up for the three arrows. One is a confirmed trend change. So when the trend has confirmed the trend to have changed, from buy to sell, sell to buy, based on my strategy, an arrow will pop up. When there's a counter trend trade, so when the trend is an upward trend, but there's opportunity for a counter trend, so a trend against, a trade against the trend, arrow will pop up. That's based on my strategy. And a continuation, so when price goes up, has a pullback, but then continues in the same direction, 
That's a third strategy that, I, that I've created that there will be an arrow that pops up for that. That's all I can tell you. Those are three types of strategies that I have. There are anywhere from seven to eight different indicators and formulas and everything that's working in the background that makes each arrow pop up. So it's, you know, people are like, oh, is it a moving crossover? Is it this, is it that? No, there are so many reasons on why each arrow, the, the, the one arrow, there are seven reasons, there's seven things that have to happen at once. They all have to line up before an arrow pops up. The other two, there are eight. Eight things, eight other indicators, special everything. I can't even really get into the deal you know, without giving away the secret, the trade secret. But there's multiple factors that happen to happen all at the same time before arrow pops up. All right. Uh, I get a lot of alerts, not just arrow, but MT4 as well, alert window. How to make this alerts to pop only for arrow. Um, so you should only get two types of alerts, one for arrow, one for dashboard. That's it. So if you take the dashboard off and just have arrow on the charts that you're looking at, you only get arrow alerts. All right. Um, if you want the dashboard up, but you only want to get arrow alerts, um, doesn't make any sense because the dashboard is supposed to monitor everything. Uh, so if you want only arrow alerts, then just turn off every, all the other alerts. That's all you gotta do is turn them off. All right. How do I switch to another broker? I just explained that. So we just, uh, we just went over that. Uh, you know, the way I just logged in and showed you guys how to, uh, set the broker, how to log in. That's the same way you switch broker as well. Same thing. Go in there, add a new broker, bada bing, bada boom, bring them up, log in. You're good. Same way. All right. All right, all right, let's keep it moving, let's keep it moving. So let's jump back in here. We'll show you how to set up dashboard and we'll go over the dashboard, we'll go over arrow, we'll go over strategy number one and then we'll move over to options and walk through that, all right? So we have Bitcoin here, all right? Uh, let's go ahead and close this up. All right, now we're gonna add a dashboard. So let's just put, you gotta put a random chart, a random chart. Once you put a random chart, all right, blow it up, come up here to templates. Select blackout. Once you select blackout, boom, there it is, grayed out. Next, come down here to underneath charts. You got a gold folder with a gold star. Click on that, and this pulls up your navigator. All right, so remember, under charts, gold folder with the gold star. All right, under, ending, under navigator, come down here to expert advisors, hit the plus sign next to expert advisors, and you'll see arrow dashboard. If you do not have arrow dashboard here, uh, you most likely don't even have the arrow software downloaded, all right, or selected as your software. If you do, and you still don't see it, submit a ticket. Very rare, but submit a ticket. All right. Next, double tick arrow dashboard. All right, go to common. Under common, make sure all these four are selected. Take a picture, take a screenshot. Enable alerts, check. Allow live trading, check. Allow DLL imports, check. Allow import of external experts, check. All four must be checked. Next, go to inputs. All right, here's where the magic happens. The dashboard allows you to monitor multiple pairs on multiple time frames. So under pairs trading, you can double click this here to get the drop down icon. Click on that and you can select your own list, of your own pair list you wanna create. All right, the top seven forex pairs, the top 14, or all 28. Now, there's more than 28 currency pairs, but all 28 just means the standard 28 currency pairs. There are what are called exotics, but those are not included in the standard 28 pairs, all right? And then, of course, you have just the pairs for each of the major uh, six uh, currencies around the world, all right? I trade more than just one type of currency or seven pairs, whatever. So I always go to create my own list, which most people do. All right, and then here, uh, if you've done that, come down here to time frame to use. So what time frames do you want to monitor? I only look at four. You look at whatever you want to. I only look at four. These, these time frames must be identical to what they are right here on the menu. So here on the MT4 menu, they must be the exact way. M's are capital, H's are capital, D is capital, W and M is capital, or the M and N. Everything is capital, all right? For me, I delete all this here. I only look at the minute five, so M5, no space, comma, M, capital M, one five, no space, comma, all right, capital H, number one, no space, comma, capital H, number four, 
That's all I look at. Those are the four time frames I care the most about based on the way that I trade. And again, if you have your own strategy or you do your own top down analysis, whatever the case may be, you can put in whatever the time frame is you want to trade here. All right. Next, come down here to own pair list. All right. Double click on that until everything's highlighted. Hit delete. I'm going to put in the 10 pairs that I recommend. All right. The 10 pairs that I recommend to utilize arrow with. All right. You have to put them in the exact way your broker has them. I'll show you where to find that at, just to double check. All right, but based on my broker, I'll put them in this way. So first one is the Great Britain Pound Japanese Yen, GBP, JPY, no space, comma, it's all caps. All right, next is Great Britain Pound US Dollar, so all caps, no space, comma. Next is Great Britain Pound Australian Dollar, all capital, no space, comma. Next is the Great Britain Pound versus the New Zealand dollar, so all caps, no space, comma. Great Britain Pound, Swiss franc, all caps, no space, comma. Great Britain Pound, Canadian dollar, all caps, no space, comma. Next are, those are the six pound pairs. Six pound pairs, four euros. So those are the six pounds. Here are the four euro pairs. EUR, GBP, so the euro versus the Great Britain Pound. No, all caps, no space, comma. Uh, the EUR, AUD, which is the Euro versus the Australian dollar, all caps, no space, comma. EUR, JPY, all caps, no space, comma. That's the Euro versus the Japanese yen. And then last but not least is the Euro versus the New Zealand dollar, EUR, NZD. All right, all caps. Because this is the last one, I'm not going to put a comma at the end, so I don't worry about that. All right. So now I've got my time frames and my pairs in there. Next, I want to make sure I come down here. I uh, allow alerts, true, uh, and alerts, uh, alerts notify, true. The rest of you can turn off if you want to, doesn't really matter. Allow alerts and alerts notify need to be both true. All right. Next, template for new chart. Come down here, default. Please pay attention right here. Everyone gets this one. A lot of people, this is a, one of the most common mistakes. If for some reason, try to pull up a chart and it doesn't have arrow on it from the dashboard, you did not put this information in here or you do not have arrow in your templates folder drop down, which we talked about, make sure to submit a ticket. So where it says template for new chart and it says default here, delete that capital letters, A-I-R-O type in arrow. Because what this thing is gonna do is the dashboard is gonna pull up the template of arrow. So every time you pull up a time frame for a different selected pair, it's gonna pull up that time frame with arrow already on it. All right, and then next but not least, uh, ADR number of days. All right, come here, double click on five, delete that out, turn to 10. All right, ADR is the average daily range, just the average number of pips that price moves for a specific pair, you know, on a given day, on a given day basis. All right, we are looking at 10 days. We want to look at the average of the number of pips that price moves on a certain pair for the last. 10 days, 10 trading days. So not just 10 regular days, 10 trading days, which gives us two weeks of data and helps us define a stronger trend, all right? After you've done that, you select, okay. Once you've done that, your dashboard populates here, all right? All right, and you see here in the top right-hand corner, it says arrow dashboard with a smiley face. If you do not see a smiley face, there's two reasons why, number one, you don't have auto trading right here selected. So you make sure after you set your dashboard up, you come here to auto trading and hit this, turn this button from green. See, it's red now, sad face. If I turn auto trading back on, it's green, smiley face. If your auto trading is still on, is on, and you still have a sad face, click on the smiley face or the sad face, come to common, make sure allow live trading is checked, which you should have done from the very beginning as we already went through. All right. So here's the dashboard. First thing I want to point out, if you see that any of these boxes here are grayed out, like I have right here, you inputted in your pair incorrectly, or you missed a comma, or there's a space, whatever the case may be, most of the time you inputted in your symbol wrong. So here's how you find the symbols for each pair. You come to view, symbols, and bada bing, bada boom, here they are. So for Forex crosses, boom, here it is. So the one we missed here, we have here is E-R-U-A-U-D. I purposely spelled it wrong so that it would pop up great. So as you can see here, 
boom, there it is. The euro versus Australian dollar. It's E-U-R-A-U-D. This right here, don't worry about what's in the parentheses, only the first part of the symbol that's not in parentheses. You wanna make sure you have a double check mark here. So double click it, you see that? I unchecked it now. So you see this gray box here with the money sign. Double click that to make sure it's gold. All right, now we know what the issue is. Select the smiley face. All right, come to inputs. Come here to own pairs. And that, there it is. There it is. So let's go in here and fix that. E U R A U D. There we go. Got that fixed. Hit OK. Let it bring itself back up. Bada bing, bada boom. Everything's black now. Every box should be black. All right. Now we're good to go. All right. Now, before I go through explain this, uh, let's start to see if there's any questions. Yep, I put E-R-U, I put that on purpose. Can you run a demo and a cash account with one subscription? Yes, you just have to flip back and forth between each, each uh, uh, oh, hold on guys, hold on guys, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, all right, Bill, yeah, how's it going? Our illustrious CTO has joined the call. All right. Uh, so real quick here to answer the question, you can run both a demo account and a live account. Uh, you all have to do is switch back and forth. All right. And to switch back and forth, let's go share screen real quick here. What you could do is come up here to where it says accounts, hit the plus sign. You see mine just has a demo account. It, let's say that it had a, underneath it, it said uh, my broker's name slash live. Then I'll hit the plus sign next to that and double click like, like here. It'll bring all the credentials up, select log in. And now it switched my account from demo to live. And you can know that because you can select underneath charts. You got this button right here, that's your terminal. Select that and you'll see it'll show you your balance. So I noticed a demo account, my balance is 47.85 in my demo account. If you know you have $5,000 even in your live account, when you switch to your live, it, it'll tell you your balance down here and you'll know that you've successfully switched. Also up here at the top of the screen, you'll see that it says your broker's name live and then your name. So you know that you're in your live account, all right? That's how you switch from account to account, all right? All right, let's take a look here. Is it use the same indices of crypto? Uh, your name is anonymous. So I, again, if your name is anonymous, I, I do not answer questions for those who are anonymous. You need to make sure that you're, you have your full name here. All right. So we, is it a requirement for the dashboard to be on the H1 time frame? Mm, no, I mean, it doesn't matter what time frame you put it on. You have to put a dashboard on a chart, but it doesn't matter. Open the chart, put dashboard on a chart. It doesn't matter if it's a day one chart, a minute chart, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. You just, that's just the chart that I have automatically pulled up. So it doesn't matter at all. I have a problem, whereas my dashboard isn't saving the way I customize it. Uh, so that's not a problem. You cannot save your dashboard. All right. You cannot save your dashboard at the time. All right. So that's just the way the software way it's locked down. It doesn't allow you. Uh, it doesn't allow you to uh, save your dashboard, you know, because of the way the VPS is locked down, saving your own setups, it's not 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 uh, able to do that at this point. All right, I asked about indices of crypto. All right, I don't know what you what you're asking uh, with about indices of crypto. Please uh, give me some more information. You know, a ask a little more thoroughly what you're asking. My dashboard is not spread out as yours. All right, so if your dashboard is is condensed, that means you need to go and change the um, resolution on your computer. Uh, so Eric can go change the resolution on your computer uh, so that it can uh, change the resolution and even the font on your computer, on your actual screen. And that will make it bigger for you. Why are those recommended pairs the best? Uh, is it because you trade London? No, it's not because I trade London. The software works beyond London. It works on every time frame, every session. All right, so those pairs are the best because my software is a momentum trending software. So it is going to explain to you and show you 
when the trend is starting to catch momentum. Those 10 pairs have the highest ADR, which means that they move and they are the most volatile Forex pairs in all of Forex, just outside of the indices, just the standard Forex pairs, those 10 out of the 28. Therefore, you're going to have a higher probability of catching more pips with those pairs than you will with the other 18. All right. Uh, no, you do not have to start from scratch if you want to add a pair. I just explained and showed you how to watch it, how, to, how to add a pair, how to add a pair, how to uh, change a pair. All right. Make sure you pay attention, guys. All right. That way you don't have to ask the same questions over and over again. If you want to add a new pair or change a pair, like I just showed you, select the smiley face. Let me turn it back on. All right. Come here to inputs. Go to own pairs. You can change a pair here or you can hit comma at the very end. X A U U S D. That's gold and add a pair. All right. Once you've done that, it added it for you without you having to change anything. Start from scratch. All right. Got to make sure you pay attention, guys. Also, the video on how to set things up. It's already out there. So, you, you know, this is already in place there, guys. Make sure you make sure you fall into the videos. All right. Uh, is arrow you the same for indices and crypto trading? Uh, strategy number one is outside of that. No. All right. I don't teach over indices and arrow. Uh, in my videos, because again, if you have to ask questions like that, you're not ready or prepared to trade indices of crypto. All right. It's not about finding a way to make as much money as possible. You need to understand the basics. That is why I only teach on those 10 Forex pairs. That's it. The strategies are built around those four, those 10 Forex pairs. Why? Because as beginners, which most people are that utilize the software, they need to understand the basics, the foundation. And then from there, they can then migrate over into precious metals like, you know, gold and silver indices like US 30, GER 30, you know, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, things of that nature. All right. If you have to ask basic questions about crypto indices or gold, you're not ready for it. Stick with the forex pairs, master those, then move. Otherwise, you're just going to lose your money faster than you will with forex pairs. All right. I'm just trying to protect you guys. Got to learn. Got to learn it the, uh, you know, I want you guys to, to learn it uh, uh, the easy way and not the hard way. Don't be like me and blow a whole bunch of money learning it the hard way. All right. Ha <laughs> ha. Key said, indices obey. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm mad at you, man. I'm not mad at you. Took me a while uh, before I even wanted to touch indices. But when I got a hold of them and I was mentally prepared, uh, even then, there still was a learning curve. All right. Even then, it's still a learning curve. And if you guys have been on, my, on this journey, for everyone that's, you know, that's, that's here that's been around for the last at least two, three months, has known that even myself, as long as I've been trading, we've started to trade GER, and we're now having even better success because there's levels to this. I was trading GER one way. We had some mild success. Now we're having even greater success, and we're managing our risk using and, and not you know, having better entries. Why? Because there's levels to the game. You can't go from zero to 100. Doesn't work that way. All right, you got to work your way up. All right, so let's jump back on it real quick here. I've answered all the questions and let's jump back on the charts. Let's go back over what the dashboard is and then we'll go over strategy number one. All right, so the dashboard is a simplistic way to manage every time an arrow pops up on a specific pair. So if you don't want to have a thousand pairs open with multiple time frames, all right, then you just use the dashboard. And so right now I've got the dashboard set up for 10 pairs the 10 forest pairs and gold. So under symbol, it tells you what each one is. SPR is the spread. All right, so let's click on GJ here. All right, GJ, uh, you can see here, there's a red line and a white one. It's already pre-made for you. You're gonna have yours built in. The red line is the ask. So if I hit buy, you always buy to ask, you always sell the bid. The white line is the bid. So when you buy, it puts the entry at the at the red line. If I hit sell, it hits. There it is, the entry at the white line. Because you always buy the ask, the red line on top. You always sell the bid, the white line on the bottom. All right, always. The spread is the difference between the two. So the gap, the number of pips in between the red line and white line is the spread. So if you go back here and you see that the spread says 1.3, that means your spread is 1.3 pips so just slightly over one all right i've got it set to when spread is three or more it's going to be red 
It only really matters on Forex pairs. So you can see GGGN has a spread of 3.2 right now. You want to be trading when the spread is less than that. All right. Also, this should be you if you're looking this out for, because in the hours of 4 p.m. Central Standard Time to 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, that's when the Forex market is changing over to a new day, technically, uh, even though it's not closing, it's just switching over. All right. And you'll see the spreads go crazy. Some of these Forex pairs can have spreads of 40, 50 pips. This is just another visual indicator to let you know, hey, watch out for something. Because if you see the dashboard says 40 pips on the spread and you enter into the trade, it's not a very good look. All right. Next is DLY open. So that is the daily open. How many pips has price moved and in what direction from where it opened at? So GJ, it says 20. All right. So you come here and look. The new day started uh, here on this white dotted line. And since then, price has moved down 20 pips. All right, so price has moved down 20 pips since the, uh, the day, the new day started, all right? And you see that because orange. If it's green, that means price has moved up X amount of pips. WLY open, exactly, it's the weekly open. How many pips has price moved since the week started? All right. The week starts every day, Sunday, 4 p.m. Central. And then ADR should say 10 underneath it. That tells you the average number of pips price moves per day for the past 10 trading days. You see here, GJ is averaging 118 pips per day. All right. 118 pips per day on average for the last 10 days. All right. So what does that tell me? It tells me that when I enter, when I look to enter a trade on GJ, I want to look at the ADR. If the ADR is 75% used up. So for example, let's say the ADR of GJ is 100, all right, 100 even. And ADR is 75 at 100. That means price, again, it's never guaranteed to go to its ADR. It just gives you a probability. So if 75% of the ADR for the past 10 days is used up already, I'm not looking to enter into a trade, at least not in that direction. So let's, let's say price has been trending up, all right, and the ADR is 75 at 100. I'm not looking to enter a trade because the probability of price going at least 20 pips in my favor reduces, all right? I'm, I mean, again, when it gets over 90%, this will turn red. So when it's 75%, this turns uh, yellow. When it's 90% of the way to its ADR, it turns red, all right? When it gets to 90% of the way to its ADR, I'm potentially looking for a reversal. Now I'm looking for setups for a reversal, all right? That's how I utilize the ADR, just to give me information and then I go and see and see if that information plays out on the chart. If it does, great. And I'm just looking for my setup during that time frame. All right. Next, you get in time frames. These columns are your time frames that you want to monitor. Underneath each time frame is the candle time. So this says right now one minute and 10 seconds until the next minute five candle. One minute, 10 or 11 minutes, 10 seconds to the next 15 minute candle, so forth and so on. They're a little delayed, but that's just to ensure that it doesn't slow things down. All right. So when a, I think you guys saw earlier, when an, an arrow does pop up on one of these pairs, on one of these time frames, it'll either show red or green on one of these squares. Red means it's a down arrow. Green means it's up arrow. So let's say GJ had an up arrow, a green square here. That means an up arrow appeared on the minute 15 time frame for GJ. Select that. By the bing, by the boom. You see here, GBP, JPY, M15 chart popped up with arrow already on the software. I mean, already on the chart. So you don't have to worry about what? You don't have to worry about adding the software back because it's already going to be here. All right. If it doesn't pop up, that's what we talked about earlier. You didn't put arrow in that section of the settings. All right. All right. So now we've got that. I don't see any questions or Q&A. Let's talk about strategy number one, which strategy number one works on everything, even options, which will go over options as well. All right. Strategy number one, bounce, arrow, go. Bag method, all right? There are three ways to utilize strategy number one, all right? Three ways. Uh, let me throw, sorry, three simple rules to take trades for strategy number one, all right? So let's pull up, uh, pull up GJ on the H1, all right? Pull up GJ on the H1, all right? Rule number one, zoom out all the way. Count your zones. Or right, actually, before we do that, let's go over, let's go over arrow. All right, so while we're here, let's go over arrow. All right, so to understand arrow, let's go over to what you see here, the visuals of arrow. So you got green zones, you get red zones. 
The red zones represent resistance. The green zones represent support, the floor, all right? Uh, resistance, the ceiling, green, support, the floor. All price does every day is bounce off the floor and the ceiling all day long. The goal is to know in what direction, because even though it might be bouncing up over, you know, up and, up and down all day long, it may be overall trending up. You see here, I'm going up and down, but overall I'm going up, or I'm going up and down, but overall I'm going down, all right? So as you zoom out, you can see that even though price is bouncing up and down the floor and ceiling, overall it's been trending up. Now it's slowly starting to trend down, but it still hasn't quite broke the trend yet. It's starting to bounce back up. How do I know it hasn't broke the trend yet? Well, because you can see here, there are four green zones, three red. So it's still uptrend because you have more up zones, more support zones than you do have resistance zones. All right. Uh, next, uh, you see the candles are red and green. They're not always red and green. If you take the software off, let's take the software off, take the arrow off, you can see, boom, they're red and green all over. They're just overall red and green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green. But when you add the software back, all right, when you add the software, it color codes everything. So when prices, most of the time, when prices underneath this blue line, it's trending down. Therefore, it's going to be red. And when it's above the blue line, it's most likely trending up and it's going to be green. All right. Another visual to help you understand what the trend is. All right, give you more confirmation and more uh, yeah, confirmation for your trade and make you feel more confident about taking the trade as well as holding the trade or more confident about exiting the trade. All right, so that you can secure the bag. All right, the blue line is the arrow moving average, another visual indicator. This arrow moving average lets you know how price is trending. If the arrow the moving average is trending, is moving down itself, you see price is most likely going with it. If it's moving up, price is going with it as well. All right, then you've got the shaded area. It happens every day in between these white lines here. The shaded area is the, um, it is the money zone. Why is it called the money zone? Well, it's called the money zone because over 80% of all money that's traded in Forex is traded during this 12 hour block of time. All right, this is a 12 hour block of time between 12 p.m. Central Standard Time and 12, I'm sorry, 12 a.m. Central Standard Time and 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right, 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. Central Standard Time is this money zone. This is where over 80% of the market is traded. All right, the best thing you want to do, especially as a beginner or even as an advanced trader, you want to be trading with the money and in the direction of the trend. Only makes sense. Allows you to, to make your money, all right? So uh, next is the arrows. There are three types of arrows, which I talked about earlier. Uh, and the arrows pop up when they pop up. All right, even I don't know when they're gonna pop up, all right? I can speculate because I've been using it, the software long enough that I can kind of get pretty close. Like, ah, yeah, the arrows should pop up in the next candle or two. And it typically does. But the longer you utilize the software, the more you'll understand uh, or, or start to catch a rhythm of when the arrows pop up, all right? But even I don't know. There's times I think it's going to pop up and doesn't. Uh, it's all based on all the metrics, all right? All the calculations and all the um, programming done in the back, uh, back end of the software, all right? And then last but not least, you have your pip counter here, all right? Every time you enter a trade, it's going to put those trades there. Uh, actually, let me go enter those trades real quick one more time. So let's go with sale and buy real quick and boom, boom, boom. When you enter into a sale, whatever you enter, whatever asset class, so a Forex pair, an indice, a crypto, whatever, it's going to bring up that pair's name here, either in red or green. If it's red, that means you're in a sale. If it's green, that means you're in the buy. All you do is look, look next to it, it tells you, are you up or are you down as far as your pips? Right now, we're down two pips on each. We're one and two now for the sale and for the buy. And then the pip calculator at the top calculates the overall number of pips that you are up or down. All right. Pretty cool visual. It's going to help you understand and manage because if you go to a different pair. All right. Let's go to gold. Boom. It still tells me what's going on on GJ. All right. So a pretty cool tool. Uh, if you want to share on your stories, you can show here how many pips you've caught. Uh, and it's just a cool way to kind of, you know, show you what's going on. All right. Let me go close those out.
All right, so let's go over bag entry real quick. Let's go over strategy number one. All right, strategy number one. Zoom out all the way. Count your zones. We already did. We have four green, we have three red. So what does that mean? That means that we are in an uptrend and that means we are only looking for to take buy entries, all right? Only looking to take buys, all right? Now, uh, step number two, only take trades inside the money zone, all right? And then step number three, only take trades in the direction of the trend, so in this case, a buy, inside the money zone with a bag entry. And a bag entry is bounce, arrow, go. So what does that mean? So if we're looking to only take buys, that means we want price to bounce off of the support, or off the green zone, head up, give us an up arrow, we take that trade. Bounce, arrow, go. This trade, you would have caught up to the zone, 50 pips. Because when you take the trade, you want to make sure, depending on what time frame you're on, there's 20 pips or more before you get to the next opposite color zone. So if you're looking for a trade, a buy trade, you're waiting for the bounce off the green, and you want price to be more than 20 pips away from a red zone. If you're entering a sale, you're waiting for it to bounce off the red zone, give a down arrow, and you want the next green zone to be more than 20 pips away. Here, we had over 50 pips away. And guess what? We got in, price went up over 50 pips, hit that zone, you just closed out. Simple as that. That is the bag entry method, all right? That is the bag entry method. Bag stands for bounce, arrow, go. When used correctly, the bag method can get you the bag, all right? Uh, that is it. Let's check uh, Q&A and chat. Nobody? Great. All right, cool. So now we got that out of the way, let's go look at options real quick. All right, then we'll end this call. Let's go look at options. All right, I'm going to use a platform that, uh, again, we can't recommend what type of platform you utilize for, uh, that you utilize for options. There are multiple out there, but we'll show you the actual bag method, how it works for the platform, all right? Give me one second here, I gotta log back into mine. All right. So one of the brokers I use, and I use multiple brokers, is Pocket Options. So this is one of the brokers I use here. You see here, I am on the Great Britain Pound Japanese chart, Japanese yen chart. When you first log in, it's going to ask you if you want to set up a demo account or a live account. Uh, again, it's always recommended that you set up a demo account first. Get used to the platform you're trading on. Also get used to using the strategy. All right. Once you get done doing both, then guess what? You have the availability, the opportunity to do what? Switch over to live and make real money. It's always recommended to actually set up, all right, to set up uh, on a demo account first, all right? So real quick, we'll break it down here or what you're seeing here. Um, so you got a chart here. You got the zoom in and out buttons here, of course. You can always zoom in and out, all right? Uh, here, you can slip on this here and change from currencies, the cryptos, the commodities, the stocks, whatever you want to trade to. All right, this icon right here is for changing from different types of candlestick formations. All right, I use candles. All right, next you can also pick your time frames. All right, I'm gonna be on the minute one chart, M1. All right, and then you can also enable your timer. That just That's just your candle timer. I know a lot of people love the candle timer, all right? Uh, right, hold on one second, guys. Got to emerge. Hold on one second here.
All right, guys, sorry about that. All right, so uh, let's go back to sharing the screen real quick here and going over everything. All right, so here again, you can enable your timer, change the time frames and your chart types. All right, uh, this next one here allows you to add indicators. All right, we'll talk about a few of those. We're gonna add two real simple ones. All right, next you can come here to drawings. You know, you can draw fibs, trend lines, rectangles, all that good stuff. All right, and then from here, you can start trading, I mean, social trading, market watch, trade monitor, just some tools that this platform utilizes, all right? All right, so uh, over here is your purchase time. So I mean, you get all your different icons you need to do your purchasing. So here, you can see here, my purchase time. So what is an option? An option, all right, an option, is where you select or you invest a specific amount of money and you win or lose based on the amount of time frame you are investing your money for. So for example, if we put a place of time here, place a trade on for hundred dollars and we select that our option time frame is one minute. If our price, if we're saying we're gonna, you know, right now price is buying, big strong buy. If we select buy here for one minute and price stays above our entry for one minute, we win the trade. That's all an option is, all right? An option simply is a set time, all right? A set time that we select, all right? We select, and if price stays above that time or below it based on which direction we are expect price to go into, we win the trade. If it doesn't, we lose the trade, all right? Very, very simple, all right? So for those who, struggle with forex and catching a certain amount of pips all right you may be good with catching three four five pips or you know having you know having a strategy with arrow that works very well for you for a short amount of time that may mean that your niche may be op options because as we've talked about multiple times or as i've talked about multiple times arrow it works on everything it doesn't matter if you have stock options options here if you have Forex, crypto, precious metal futures, doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is you master the strategies and then you find what asset class works best for you. Because once you find the asset class that works best for you, then you'll start to see the power of error because then it will actually help you and guide you to being more successful. So that's why we're bringing out options now. And there'll be more to come. You know, we've already had Forex, we've already had crypto, we've already had precious metals, we've already had indices. Now we have options. That's five different asset classes you now have options to. Because at the end of the day, the software works. You guys have seen the results, but it just might not work for you when it comes to Forex, or it might not work with you when it comes to crypto or with precious metals or with uh, indices. But maybe it worked for you with options. That's what it comes down to is figuring out what asset class works best for you. But you still have to put the time in. You still have to master the strategies. There is no shortcut. Yes, you may have heard the great success stories that some of the educators have had or others have had with options. Guess what? He mastered the strategy of bounce arrow go. Doesn't mean that there's some secret sauce. No, you still have to master the strategies. All right, if you don't, you're gonna have the same success that you had in all the other platforms, all the other asset classes, all right? You still have to master the fundamentals. Doesn't matter what asset class you're on. There is no secret sauce. I'm telling you, if there was, I'd have gave it to you. We all be millionaires. I'm not a millionaire, but if I had a secret sauce to make $100,000 every day, which now I do, we're gonna get there, all right? And guess what that secret sauce is? Bounce, arrow, go. Simple as that, all right? Master the fundamentals, master the strategy, apply it to the asset class that you work best with have success all right no guarantees but that's what's showing to have worked 
All right. Uh, so over here, purchase time. You can see this little flag here. Uh, that's what I usually do. And it tells me my expiration time frame. Because remember, we want to set our expiration time frame for whatever we think is going to work best. All right. So for me, I'm going to come here. I want it to be two minutes. All right. So we're going to use the one minute time frame for all pairs on Arrow. We're going to use the one minute time frame here on options platform, pocket options. And we're going to use a two minute expiration time. The one, one, two strategy. So it's bag entries, the bag strategy, the one, one, two bag strategy. Arrow, one minute chart. Pocket options, one minute chart. Expiration time, two minute time frame. One, one, two. All right. Trade them out. Again, uh, it's been talked about. You want to risk uh, 5% is what I recommend I, I, of your account at a time. That's what I recommend. All right. I recommend 5% of your account at a time. So uh, you see here, I've got a $17,000 account uh, here on my demo account. Let's see, 5% uh, would be 850 bucks, all right? So let's change that to 850, 850, all right, 850, all right? Now, right now it tells me up here, you see GBP, JPY, 70%. That 70% means that if I win the trade, Pocket Options is gonna pay me 80% of whatever my trade amount is. So as you can see here, it tells me if I buy and I win or I sell and I win, I'm gonna make 595 profit. So it's gonna take my 850 out of my account, but if I win, it'll give me my 850 back or, and it'll give me an additional $595, all right? Here's the beauty of, of, of options trading. With Forex, you can blow your account by letting, you know, for getting a stop loss and all this. This thing is pretty cool because now the, the actual um, uh, risk management is already halfway done for you. Because if you lose a trade, that's it. It doesn't take any more, doesn't take any less. It takes exactly the amount you put in as your trade amount. So if you put your trade amount as $5 and you lose, you only lose $5. You can go to sleep on that trade. And when you wake up, your account may be up or down $5 depending on if the trade won or not. That's it. The only thing that you now have to worry about is selecting and setting up your actual risk management. Again, I'm, I'm saying 5%, that's just me. You wanna start lower, you start lower, all right? Uh, uh, of course, this button, if I hit it, it's gonna put my buy entry right there. If I hit this button, it's gonna put a sale in, all right? And then when trades are open, they're right here. And when they're closed, you select close, you'll be able to see all your closed trades. So you come here, close, you can see all the trades that are closed out. Look at all that, if it's green, Right there, you won money, all right? If it's, well, that's all I can see here. So you see, all, I won all these trades. They're all green here. If it's, a, if it's a, a loss, it'll be zero right here in the middle. It'll show your trade amount, but it'll show zero here in the middle. Uh, and then if you broke even, because you can't break even, which means all they do is just give you your money back, which is cool, because uh, you can't do that in Forex. <laughs> well, I guess you can't break even. But in, break, in, in Forex, you still lose the spread or the commission. They still gonna hit you with the commission. So here, there isn't one. So if you break even, it'll just say whatever your amount is. So had I lost, had I broke even here, instead of saying 900, because you see here it says 80%. So at the time I was trading 3M company, OTC, I, I was, my trade amount was 500. The amount payout was 80%. 80% of 500 is 400. So when I won the trade, they pay me out 900. My 500 back plus 80%, which is 400, is 900. All right, that's that right there. All right. Uh, so again, if it says just 500 or whatever your trade amount is, that means you broke even. If it says zero, it means you lost. If it says 900, it means you won or whatever that amount looks like. You know, the your trade amount multiplied by the percentage. All right. So that's that. All right. Now, cool. So two things you need. You only need two indicators. All right. Only need two indicators. All right. One zigzag, one moving average, all right? One zigzag, one moving average. The zigzag is there as a visual. We'll talk about some advanced things on how to use a zigzag, all right? But right now, it's just a visual to help you see the overall trend, help you see the patterns, help you see those M's and W's, which helps you to understand when you may have a good opportunity for a setup, all right? For those who love the strategy number seven, that is the M, W, and wedge strategy, all right? so. Uh, you want to come up here to where it says indicators. So these three little lines here. Come here. You want to select moving average. 
Just click that one time. Next, come over here to zigzag. Click that one time. All right. On the zigzag, click on the little pencil. We're gonna we're gonna leave it the same. Come to styles, change it to uh, whatever you want to change it to. But I say at least change it to four pixels, four p four px, right here. So under styles, I just change the color to blue, make it stand out a little more, and I change the, the line width to four pixels to make it stand out even more. All right. So we got that there. Hit save. Come back to moving average. Select the pencil moving average. We're going to select the 62, 62, and we're going to make it an EMA. All right. I go to styles. All right. Here, I'm going to make it two pixels. Uh, all right. On that aspect. And for the color, it uh, doesn't really matter. We'll select white, though. All right. And oops. And save. All right. So now it stands out. All right. Now it stands out. So now look at that W. That's beautiful. Leg one, leg two, leg three, boom. Strategy number seven. If this setup, actually, let's go look at it. Let's look, this is the uh, one minute chart of arrow. Let's go look at it. Let's go look at arrow one minute chart. Let's just see what we had. All right, let's see what we had. I just want to see. I just want to see it real quick. So we're on here. Let's go to arrow one minute. Right, arrow one minute. All right. Looks like a W formation to me. See a W formation? Leg one, leg two, leg three, leg four. And look. Look what happened. Here's the neckline, and strategy seven says what? The first count that breaks above the neckline, when it closes above the neckline, slanted W, see that W slanted? Take the trade. So not only did it win here, it also won on pocket options. The strategy works. So if you have this set up here with arrow, you didn't turn around and take the trade on pocket options. Simple as that. All right? Simple as that. So um, I'm waiting for a bag entry. All right, let's see if we can get a bag entry. We're on the one-minute chart here. We're on the one-minute chart. So what we're now waiting on, as you guys can see here, we're in a downtrend. We got more. Oh, we actually got two and two. Let me zoom out here. We're in uptrend. All right? We're in uptrend, which we already knew. We were in uptrend. All right? The W, you want to make sure when you take Ws, you're in uptrend. The M's, you want to make sure you take the M's when you're in a downtrend, all right? Uptrend, W's, downtrend, M's. That was a win. That same one, when you saw that happen like that there, bada bing, bada boom, when you're on pocket options, all right? Switching back to pocket options, you should have immediately, there that one is right there, got into a buy on his next candle for two minutes. Two minutes. So you see here, this is a one-minute candle. That's a one-minute candle. So your entry's down here. Your entry would have been right here and two minutes later one two you'd have been up here i think that's a win all right i believe that is a win simple as that guys simple as that same thing with the bag entries whenever you have a bag entry remember identify the trend don't worry about uh the actual money zone all right for pocket options it's totally different Identify the trend. If you are trading inside the, time, the money zone, great. Outside the money zone, again, we're going to put together the, 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 the I'm going to say the rules, but we're going to put together a list of the best times to trade. So right now, as I think about it, stick to inside the money zone. Uh, I will say, though, uh, between the hours of 6 p.m. Central and the start of the money zone, you can add those on there. All right, you can add so all the money zone plus 6 p.m. Central all the way to the money zone. The six hours after the money zone ends and before 6 p.m. Central, so from noon to 6 p.m. Central, that is no man's land. Now, inside the money zone and that 6 to midnight time frame, there are times where price isn't as volatile. Like right now, you can see it's just ranging. It's not always going to be trending. It's just ranging right now. But this trade happened while we were on the call. While we've been on this call, this setup happened here. W formation, you saw it on, on, on uh, arrow. Uptrend, W formation, bada bing, bada boom. M's and W's work outside of the money zone. And it, boom, now you see it work here. So same thing, when you get a bag entry in with the trend, identify the trend inside the money zone or those additional six hours, take the trade, two minute time frame. Remember, one minute, on the arrow chart, so the chart you have arrow on, all right, make sure your pocket options is on one minute and your expiration time, two minutes. 
one, one, two strategy for bag entries. All right. Enter the trade, collect your percentage. That's it guys. So that's how we use the bag entry. Uh, again, slight variation on how you use it because it is different asset class, but simplistic strategy when it comes to arrow. All right. Uh, can you help show how to set up TP and stop loss? There is no TP and stop loss. Let's go do a trade real quick. I'll show you guys how it works. There is no TP and stop loss. We've talked about that, guys. I've already explained that. All right, so this trade is going up here. When this closes, we got, see the count timer here, we got five seconds. I'm gonna just assume it's gonna keep going up here. So uh, let's say it's a bag entry right here. I hit high, I hit buy, higher. I think it's gonna go higher. And I got a two minute expiration time. As you can see here, I put a trade on. All right, it's telling me it's doing my countdown timer here. All right, seventy percent, and it keeps flashing. So it's fourteen forty-five. So if I win this trade, it's going to add fourteen forty-five to my account. You see, my account was at seventeen thousand one hundred. They already took out the eight fifty, so they're either going to give it back to me with interest, with the five ninety-five. It tells you how much you win there, or it's going to take the whole eight fifty from me. That's it. There is no take profit. There is no stop loss. I've got a minute and 23 seconds now and count down until the trade ends. And so we're just waiting for the trade to end. Is it? Simple as that. So we'll sit here and wait. We'll sit here and wait. All right, while we're waiting here, let me go look at some more questions here. Uh, Q and A. How can you tell any pips you are from a sale or a buy? Again, it's not about pips, guys. All right, not about pips. All right, all you're doing is waiting for the setup. Bag entry. Now, on your actual uh, on your actual uh, arrow chart, you want to make sure that your uh, your trade is more than twenty pips. But it didn't really matter. Uh, after that, I mean, once you get make sure you get the room to the next zone, the opposite zone, like I explained, take the trade on pocket options. All right, that's it. Now we've sit here. We've got uh, thirty seconds left. We got thirty seconds left, and we are in the money. You see, it's still holding green here. We're above our entry. I feel good taking this buy because guess what? We had a W formation there. Boom, boom, boom. Look, it's another W formation. Closed above it. Hit that buy. So we already know the overall trend is up because guess what? He just looked at it. All right. We got five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Look at it push. Uh. Now, 1625. 17,695 closed trades. You see here, we won that trade. Boom, boom, boom. Simple as that, guys. Easy W formation trade. Easy win. Can't make this up. This is how you get to the bag. But you have to master the strategies first. That was strategy seven. Again, more advanced on how to use it with, 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 with options. But again, all the strategies I bring to you guys, they apply on every asset class. The only thing that changes is the variation on how you use them. So we start off with the bag entry. I'll start bringing up M's and W's and wedges. We'll go over all of it. And eventually you guys will understand how to use each strategy, not only on the Forex pairs and indices and all that, but also on the option side. All right. Let's go here and take a look here. Getting reacquainted with your old babe because your new babe is not eligible for level one. <laughs> uh yeah so you're talking about yeah with the uh with manifest trading yeah so i can tell you manifest trading i'll only be trading uh forex pairs until level two then we can trade we can trade everything all right and then are you setting on digital trading or quick trading all right for me uh i have mine on uh uh, quick trading so mine is on quick trading mine is on quick trading all right all right guys so hey all q a is answered all chat is answered uh again this is the new time for the call this call will probably be about an hour and a half like we've gone tonight because we're going to go over the regular arrow setup as well as going over option setup as well and, and utilize australian options all right we'll do this once a week uh every mondays now instead of sundays to make sure we have better attendance. So I can see tonight we've had double the attendance than we usually do. Uh, so that's great to see. You know, we usually have half of what we have on here on Sunday night. So, uh, and then as options gets more popular, I'm pretty sure this call will become more and more. And then you guys will see this call transform a little bit in the future once 
we get to um, the live uh, event in Orlando and we make all the announcements. You guys will understand why this call changes. All right, so if you're going to trade tonight, make sure you trade responsibly. And I'll see you guys in the funny papers. Thank you.